contained many rakes and libertines. Foremost amongst these pleasure seekers was Lord Cliffhanger of Fallen Arches. His life was an unending cycle of wild parties. Oh, enjoying my little get together, Cliffhanger! Oh, yes, thank you, Victor. Fast cars. This one does almost two miles an hour. May I try it, Herr Daimler? <laughs> and free love. <laughs> that will be 30 guineas, Lord Cliffhanger. <laughs> but every pleasure has its price. And soon, Lord Cliffhanger's funds were exhausted. Only one man stood between him and the debtor's prison. Seaboam Longshaft. Oh! President of Longshaft's bank. Longshaft made his demands. Sir Jasper Bloodaxe, MP, has been compiling a dossier of my more controversial business methods. If you steal that dossier and bring it to me, I'll write off all your debts. No problem. Purloining the dossier was simple. But would Longshaft keep his word? Or did the sinister nabob of high finance have other plans for Lord Cliffhanger? The answers, as we shall now unfold, were surprising in the extreme. Fallen Archers by Stephen Sheridan Chapter 2, The Triumph of Silas Dirt They think I'm mad. All of them. <laughs> they all think I'm mad. <laughs> I'll show them. <laughs> I'm not mad. <laughs> no, indeed. <laughs> Your kippers, Lady Cliffhanger. I told you I wanted them marinated in gin. Can't you get anything right, you overstuffed pigeon? Overstuffed? <clears throat> Very good, my lady. At last, peace and quiet. I've had nothing but organ, organ, organ since Daybreak. I'm afraid his lordship's been in a very strange mood, my lady. He started talking to the shrubbery again. Oh, I hope he isn't heading for another breakdown. Oh, very father. Do I smell breakfast? I'll have my usual. Chicken heads on toast. Very good, my lord. Just a cup of tea for me, Mr. Darling. Do we have to have that man in here? Mr. Rayburn is painting a full-length portrait of me for the Great Hall. He's as blind as a bat. He may be a little short-sighted, but he doesn't paint with his eyes. Barely by running his hands over something, he can pick out its tiniest detail. Isn't uh, that right, Mr. Rayburn? That's right, Lady Cliffhanger. <laughs> nice work, if you can get it. Would you care for another feel, Mr. Rayburn? Oh, yes, please, Lady Cliffhanger. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't know much about art, <laughs> but I know what I like. Pipers! Get your papers here! My saucy knights of fashion with Sir Henry Irving! We did it under the proscenium arch, reveals raunchy walk on! Read all about it! Pipers! Good morning, uh, Dr. Woodcock. Morning? How are you getting on with the medicine I prescribed for you? Are you quite sure it doesn't have any side effects? Quite sure, Mrs. Hatchett. Now, I understand one of your tenants is seriously ill. You'll find her upstairs with my husband. Morning, good morning. <laughs> How is my little patient? Uh, Dr. Woodcock. Mr. Hatchett, what on earth are you doing to her? Um, well, I couldn't see her breathing, so I was just checking. You do that by holding a mirror over her face, not a oh, pillow. Well, you said she'd have croaked by the end of the week. You sound as though you want her to die. You bet. I've got plans for this room. Let it out to someone with a good job. I reckon I could double the rent. Mm, I don't like the sound of her chest. Oh, excellent. Shall I start measuring her for a coffin now? Sixty-three inches, that's five foot three. Put away that tape measure. He's trying to say something, a, a name. Samson. 
Does that mean anything to you? I think it's her nephew, sir, Samson Darling. The butler at Fallen Arches? Oh, you know him, sir. I'll go and fetch him. You look after her. Oh, uh, very good, sir. I wonder which is cheaper. Oak, rosewood, or teak. Wouldn't it be easy to burn the dossier, Mr. Longshaft? And risk the ashes falling into the wrong hands. Just carry on eating, Hawthorne. Oh, and you're very good, sir. No wonder you were so anxious to purloin that dossier, Longshaft. I've seldom read such an appalling catalogue of deceit and malpractice. And where do you think you're going? Admiral Sir Horace Pitt is signing copies of his History of Spanking in the Royal Navy next door. I told the butler I'd pick him up a copy. You're not going anywhere. I've decided there are one or two additional tasks I want you to perform before I write off your debts. You forget, Longshaft. I've browsed through the catalogue of your crimes. Double-cross me, and I'll tell the world what I know. What have you got to say to that, you heap of rats and screecher? Ha, 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 but you can't prove a thing without the original documents. And they are currently embarking on a mystery tour of Hawthorne's elementary canals. Oh, no, dear. Damn oh, your oh, dentures, Longshaft. Uh, tell me, how much do you know about politics? Absolutely nothing. I'm a member of the House of Lords. Then you should find your next assignment highly educational. Bravos! Bravos! This meeting of the Society of Anarchists is now in session. Now we. Shush, we done that bit, Grandpa! Don't you think your grandfather's a bit too old to be an anarchist, brother Esau? Oh, don't worry, Silas. He may be 97, but he's fitter than a man ten years younger. Isn't that right, Grandpa? I am a human fighting machine. Yeah. Uh, brothers, brothers, today we implement phase one of our plan to take over the world. The kidnapping... A lady cliffhanger. Well, yeah, I still don't see how we're going to get our hands on her, Silas. Oh, she never leaves fallen arches. And that place is harder to get in a midget's bathing costume. You forget, Esau, you forget. Samson Darling, the cliffhanger's butler, is a keen member of our organisation. He has agreed to let us in. I am not following any of this. You do. If Lord Cliffhanger don't make the government agree to our demands, we execute his vice. What are our demands? I'm giving the government 15 minutes to dismantle the British Empire, redistribute the nation's wealth equally amongst everyone, dissolve Parliament and declare me president for life. (laughs) Will will you be helping us with the kidnapping? Alas, no. I am receiving a delegation from my old union, the Grave Robbers, Body Snatchers and Allied Trades. Some of the more militant resurrection men are threatening to down spades and call a national strike. They they want us to help them with their fight. (laughs) Every day, our organisation gains new members. I tell you, brothers... Nothing can stop us now. No, yeah, that's right. Hey, <laughs> boss, hey, hey, not hey, now, Grandpa. Shut him up, will you? Ah, here's this morning's thunderer. Cast your glassy eyes over the lead story. <laughs> Thumbscrew man died. Yeah. Top Tory in Tiger Trap Tumble Tragedy. Yeah. Sir Jasper Bloodaxe, MP, a leading campaigner for the reintroduction of thumbscrews has been punctured to death mm. after falling into a pit lined with sharpened sticks. Yes, now the accursed blood axe has been spiked. There's to be a by-election in his constituency. How does that concern me? Uh, explain to him, Hawthorne. Uh, just a minute, there's a piece of paper stuck in my teeth. Now, where did I put my bullwhip? Oh, all right, all right, I'll tell him. Ow! And be quick about it. Uh, Mr. Longshaft contributes handsomely to the funds of his favourite political party. In return, he has granted certain privileges. Really? Knighthoods, telling the government what to do, that sort of thing. Ah. Yeah. He is also allowed to select the candidates at by-elections. Mm, Sir Jasper Bloodaxe was too left-wing and liberal for my liking. I want to ensure that his successor is someone easier to control. Uh, you are to choose Sir Jasper's replacement. Mm, find me some frightened, mindless, snivelling little worm who I can dominate. 
Bring him to my townhouse at noon today. I'll do my best. Thank you. Oh, and cliffhanger. Yes? Don't ever call me a heap of rats at street her again. Sir, my aunt's about to die, is she? You don't sound unduly concerned. I have other relatives. What was that? Probably Lady Cliffhanger ringing for another barrel of gin. One of the maids can attend to it. Lady Cliffhanger, oh dear. Dr. Woodcock, whatever's the matter? I'm afraid Lady Cliffhanger has become infatuated with me. One glimpse of my saturnine good looks is enough to reduce her to a drooling, leering mountain of desire. You'd better keep out of her way. I don't suppose your legs could survive another bout. What shall I tell your aunt? Is she to expect a visit from you? Alas, I have a prior engagement. They're auctioning off some antique prosthetics in town. I've had my eye on a pair of matching Louis XIV artificial arms. Mr. Darling, you are one of the fittest men I know. Yet your rooms are filled with false limbs, canapers, dentures, glass eyes, walking frames, catheters, drip feeds, bath chairs, and now, I see, an oxygen tent. I simply don't understand your obsession with surgical appliances. You're looking at me as though I'm slightly mad. I simply have a cautious nature, that's all. It's reassuring to know that should my hands drop off during the night, I have a nice, warm, artificial pair I could slip on. Will you stop rubbing linseed oil into that false foot and listen to me? Your aunt is mortally ill. Have you no pity for an old woman who's so frail and weak she can't even walk without the aid of sticks? Sticks? My aunt walks with sticks? Yes. Would they be special orthopedic sticks? What's on your mind? Well, if my auntie is about to expire, I don't suppose she'd mind giving her sticks to me. I think I will visit her after all. The ignominy of it. The 15th Lord Cliffhanger, totally in the power of a jumped-up moneylender. For heaven's sake, Cliffhanger, wipe the foam from your mouth and sit down. You're oh. making me nervous. Look, I pricked myself. What's that you're embroidering? Selected positions from the Kama Sutra. I'm going to donate it to Lady Pidding, who is left patronise the poor charity of people. What do I know about selected parliamentary candidates? I need to find someone without any hopes or prospects. Someone weak and easily dominated. Someone totally devoid of a mind of his own. Who's that tiptoeing past the door? Someone like... Dr. Woodcock! Hmm? Oh. <laughs> good, good morning, Lady Cliffhanger. I'm afraid I can't stop. I, uh, there's been an outbreak of um, uh, swine fever at Vine Hall Police Station. <laughs> Dr. Woodcock, of course. Who could be a better choice? Lord Cliffhanger, why are you rolling your eyes like that? My dear, 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 Dr. Woodcock. I can't tell you how overjoyed with pleasure I am to see you. Come through to my study. I have a proposition to put to you. Hmm? Um, for Parliament? My dear Lord Cliffhanger, I may be a shabby, penniless, destitute wreck, but I still have some pride. Come, come. Your surgery has burned down. Your practice is in tatters. Most of your patients have deserted you. What are you to do? That's my research. I'm currently conducting experiments which will salvage my reputation. Still trying to reanimate the dead, are you? Don't be ridiculous. I'm currently researching into the human mind. I believe it is split into two balanced parts. One good, one evil. Each keeping the other in check. Sounds great to me. I'm on the verge of formulating a drug which will allow one part of the mind to dominate. It will totally alter the personality of the user. You needn't abandon your work. But in addition, standing for Parliament will bring you fame, power, influence. Tell me more. Imagine the scene, Woodcock. An election rally. Hundreds of people are watching you, hanging on your every word, gasping, shouting, cheering. Thrusting, groping, running their hands up and down each other's bodies. Control yourself! And I can give up my lodgings in Doss House Crescent and move in here for the duration of the campaign? Oh, yes! Accompany me to my friend Longshaft's house, convince him you're a suitable candidate, and fame, wealth and comfort will be yours. You've talked me into it, Lord Cliffhanger. I've always been susceptible to a bit of bribery. You're starting to sound like a politician already. I just don't know how you manage with these false teeth out, Clarissa. They don't fit me at all. You beat that, Shelton. This is no time to play the fool. 
forgive me for disturbing you at this difficult time, sir. I wondered if your dear aunt had passed away yet. As a matter of fact, she's feeling much, much better. Oh, no, you're joking. Seeing young Samson again has done me the world of good. I think I may be on the road to full recovery. But the undertaker's coming for you at six. What I feel like now is a breath of fresh air. Well, I could take you to visit Fallen Arches. Is she allowed to move, Mr. Hatchet? The doctor said getting a cold could prove fatal. So she'd better stay here. Nonsense! You go and fetch your hat and coat. I'll get her out of bed. Ooh! Oh, long shot. What? A couple of kids out here say they want to see you. Show them in, Bowman. Oi! Get in here now. Come on! Oh, the silly child. Uh, welcome to my home, gentlemen. I'm afraid you've missed lunch, but Cook has left a cold collation on the sideboard. Spend it, spend it. Oh. Uh, drop me crumbs, I'll smash your brain faces in. Ah, uh, you must excuse Berriman, gentlemen. Before he became my butler, he served ten years in Dartmoor for grievous bodily harm. Oh, these canopies are burnt. What was that? Nothing, nothing at all. I had no idea you were interested in reforming ex-convicts, Longshot. I'm not. Tell birds are much cheaper to employ than proper servants. All my domestic staff are former criminals. What was your cook, an arsonist? A poisoner. I suddenly lost my appetite. Oi, oi, I've got a bottle of wine here. Who wants to swing that, eh? Well, long shot. No, don't answer me. What do you think of Woodcock? Well, there is a certain strangeness around the eyes. How sane is he? Hardly at all. Mm. You'd be hard-pressed to find a more demented, mercenary, selfish old villain. Excellent. Uh, That's just the image the party is looking for. Look! Do you want this green wine or don't you? There we are. That didn't take long. Lucky I remembered to bring the spare wheelchair with me. Perhaps on the way back I can sit in it and you can push. Well, we'll see. Make yourself at home. Won't Lord Cliffhanger mind us sitting in his morning room? He only uses it in the afternoons. Besides, he's out at the moment. Oh, can we have a cup of tea, Samson? I'm gasping for one. I'll pop down to the kitchen and make us both a pot. <laughs> Who is it? Good afternoon. Anarchists calling. Yeah, we've come for that rich parasite, Lady Cliffhanger. You'll find her in a room fitting shock absorbers to her bed springs. Making us a pot of tea, brother. Don't take your grimy paws off those cups. That's our best china. Oh, I got little pictures on them. That's the cliffhanger family crest. The cuckoo rampant. Well, how will we find Lady Cliffhanger's bedroom then? Up the stairs. Turn left at the shield with the poacher's head on it. Left again past the poking room, where Lord and Lady Cliffhanger poke their friends and relatives with pencils. Oh. Knitting needles, lengths of bamboo. That part of the house was designed by a very thin architect, so the rooms are only five inches wide. Go up three flights of stairs. Three flights of stairs. Come down them again. Turn left and you'll come to a chamber marked Lady Cliffhanger's bedroom. All right, right. Lady Cliffhanger's bedroom is next to that. We've got all that. Pardon? Oh. I've got it, brother. Long live the revolution. Long live the revolution. Check. Oh, you and all the physical stuff. I'll keep a look at. You ever set eyes on Lady Cliffhanger? Well, not since her husband let her take off that iron mask. What about you? Oh, I have heard certain rumours, though. They say she's a woman driven by lust. <laughs> I can't wait much longer. My tongue's hanging out in here. Oh, yeah, that, that must be her. I thought she was supposed to be in her bedding room. Oh, it's her ass. She can move around, can't she? Get her! Quick, Quickly, Grandpa. Get her into the sack. Hold it. I said it wouldn't take long. Is Lady Cliffhanger inside that set? What are you going to do with it? Drawing pain. <laughs> That's for calling me an overstuffed pigeon. All right, boys. Take it away. <laughs> Thanks for your help, brother. <laughs> Farewell, Lady Cliffhanger. With a bit of 
blood can't never hear that shrill, nagging voice again. God! What's going on down here? <laughs> Lady Titania. You imbecile! You've smashed our best tea service! Titania's mother <laughs> yes, oh, yes. thought she was a grasshopper! <laughs> <laughs> She spent the last 15 years of her life sitting atop a wardrobe, rubbing her legs together. My word, Cliffhanger. You, you have a strange family. When you finish defaming my relatives, perhaps we can consider the matter in hand. I suppose you want more wine. Well, watch what you're doing. You've poured it all over my sleeve. You shut your gobber or shut it for you. Ferryman! Do you consider Dr. Woodcock a suitable candidate for the forthcoming by-election? Uh, that depends. How would you present yourself to the voters, Woodcock? A man with an independent mind. Mm -hmm. A man who will allow himself to be dominated by no one. Providing, of course, that's all right with you. Mm, what about policies? You only need a few of those. Where, for instance, do you stand on taxation? I think it should be abolished for all peers of the realm, presidents of international banking houses and certain members of the medical profession. That sounds eminently reasonable. Uh, law and order. Speed up the legal system. Uh -huh. Make the plea of not guilty inadmissible. Bring back trial by ordeal. Give policemen the right to arrest anyone they suspect is about to be arrested. Uh, do you have a policy for poverty and hunger? I think my edible pauper's bill will put an end to those two social evils. Ah, this is music to my ears. You're just the sort of politician this country needs. Uh, may I ask you a question, Mr. Longshot? Mm -hmm. Why is London's foremost financier so interested in one small constituency? Oh, well, my company has great plans for the area. I want to ensure that this new member of parliament won't raise any objections if I turn the odd church into a munitions factory and the occasional general hospital into a knocking shop. The free market must prevail. Excellent. Cliffhanger, I want you to ensure that Woodcock is returned to Westminster. Oh. I'm putting you in charge of his campaign. And when I finish this task, will you finally free me of my debt? Oh, I give you my word. Now remember, fight a good, clean campaign. Mm. Treat the electorate with intelligence and respect. We will. And if that don't work, kick their heads in. I tell you, Silas, morale in the grave robbing industry, it is a, an all-time low. I mean, there have been walkouts, go slows, mass picketing of cemeteries. Have you tried collective bargaining for the hospitals? They won't budge on the issue of overmanning. Unless we're down to one man, one coffin by the end of the year, they're going to start importing cheap foreign bodies. Oh. I mean, some of my members are turning ugly. You must persuade them to join forces with us. Together, brother, there ain't nothing we can't achieve. All right, Silas. What have you done with her? Brother darling, what's up? Where have you taken my aunt? Is that who she is? Oh, she's over there. She seems to have struck up quite a friendship with Brother Ezekiel. Has anyone ever told you that you've got sexy legs? <laughs> Ezekiel. <laughs> Come along, Aunt. I'm taking you back to Mr. Hatchett's boarding house. You shouldn't be out at this time of the night with your chest. <laughs> it's only a bit of bronchitis. That's nothing. Not like in the old days, eh, Clarissa? <laughs> then you had diseases you could respect. <laughs> What's that one they used to have? Uh, the King's Evil. That's the one, the King's Evil. Tuberkles, mm. swellings in the neck, oh. large lymphatic mm. glands. Oh, now that's what I call a disease. Come along, aunt. Uh, we'll be visiting fallen arches again tonight. We'll grab old Lady Cliffhanger. It's the last thing we do. 7 p.m. At last. I believe I have finally discovered a chemical which, once ingested, will totally transform the personality, and perhaps also the appearance. There remains but one final experiment. I have now consumed the drug and will await further developments. Oh, no, Lady Cliffhanger. Oh, you certainly changed our guest bedroom. I've never seen so many pieces of chemical apparatus in one place. You must leave at once. I'm conducting a sensitive experiment. Is this your Liebig condenser? It's very long and smooth. Well, Lady Cliffhanger, I have just consumed a drug whose properties I know nothing about. You could be in danger if you remain. Oh, you've got some white mice. 
Yes, you experiment on them. Lady Cliffhanger, I insist you leave. I like watching them leave. Lady Cliffhanger. I can't give you long. Mr. Rayburn is returning at 10 o'clock to work on my portrait. I'll slip into something looser and come straight back. Mm, the fool. She doesn't realize. <laughs> 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 Isn't it a beautiful evening? What do you Just mean you can't bury her? Yeah, well, when you asked me to call by your house, you told me she wouldn't last the day. But here she is, dancing round the room. Well, can't you bury her anyway? No, I'm an undertaker, Mr. Hatchet, not a hired killer. I'll come clean. I've let her room to a solicitor's clerk. Three times her rent he's willing to pay. Three times! But obviously I need her out of the way. Yes, I sympathise, Mr Hatchett, but there's nothing I can do. Okay. Supposing she met with a, a fatal accident, would you bury her then? Well, of course, but it's hardly likely, is it? Oh, I don't know. Um, that wardrobe could fall on top of her easily. Oh, nonsense, you'd need a crowbar to shift that. <laughs> Mary Ellen? Yes, dear? Fetch my crowbar from the tool shed. Uh, Mr. Hatchet, surely you don't intend... Call by my house in half an hour, sir. I think we may be able to do business. Dr. Woodcock, it's Lady Cliffhanger. Yes? God, you're ugly. Who on earth are you? Uh, the name's uh, Kane, ma'am. Edward Kane. I'm just visiting my old friend, Dr. Woodcock. How did you know he was here? He said he just moved in. Um, Where is Dr. Woodcock? Um, I can't see him in his room. What's going on? Uh, yes, it's ten o'clock. You must excuse me, ma'am. I'm due elsewhere. I'm sure we'll meet again. Extraordinary thing. Yes, yes, come in. We've come for Lady Cliffhanger. Well, at this time, she'll be in the drinking room, I mean, the drawing room with Mr. Raven, the portrait painter. Forward, brothers! <laughs> Well, I have enjoyed this evening's session, Lady Cliffhanger. Mm. Your portrait is coming along splendidly. That's just the question of your fee. Uh, I believe we said 30 guineas a day. I believe we did. There's the money. Thank you very much. Ah. Ah. What's the meaning of this? You're coming with us. Take your hands off me, uh. bed bunk. Quickly, so get her outside. Hold on. <laughs> Ah, that's it. Get her in the cart. Will you let go of me? You're our prisoner now, Lady Cliffhanger. Driver! Nothing in the world could save you now. <laughs> what? Get... <laughs> we'll be the red flag flying. In that episode of Fallen Archers, Robert Lang and Annette Crosby appeared as Lord and Lady Cliffhanger, James Cossons as Darling, Geoffrey Whitehead as Dr. Woodcock, and Chris Amott as Silas Dirt. Mr. Kane was played by John Glover, and Hawthorne by Robert Llewellyn. Don Henderson appeared as Seabone Longshaft, Joe Candle as Aunt Clarissa, and Christopher Scott as Hatchet. Fallen Archers was written by Stephen Sheridan, and produced by Mark Robson. <laughs>